One for you, Paul. <clears throat> One for you. One for me. One for you and one for me, buddy. Heading back down now. Uh, I've uh, shouted out to Paul. That felt really good. That felt really good. Just to shout at the top of my lungs. Uh, I recommend it to anyone who's grieving out there. You know, and we'll all go through it. Every single one of us. You know, I mean, losing somebody really special. <clears throat> my throat is a bit hoarse yeah all of us will lose somebody special and uh, or leave somebody special behind as in Paul's case but I recommend you go to a place and you be yourself 100% and you let it all out you know go to that special place that you both loved, that you all loved. Whatever person that might be. But yeah, we're, we're <clears throat> heading back down now. I'm gonna head into the valley and walk into Abergavenny. It's a great day. <clears throat> the Sugarloaf is over there. Sugarloaf there. And the skirid is there. I was only up there a few weeks back. Well, in December, really. All right, forwards. That was a fantastic exercise. Woo! What a lovely day. Le mot. sur une plaie quand les autres ne savent pas dans un tourbillon de pensées de cet arrêt je ne dis pas telle une arme presque dorée que tu peux nice still out of nice spot to have a bit to eat <coughs> And uh, just play the harmonica just for a short little while. So I'm going to go over there. Over there. And I'm going to look at this view here. Right here. I'm not sure if you can see it, but there's Abergavenny. Right there, the mountain town of Abergavenny. Which is essentially the eastern gateway into the Brecon Beacons. Central Beacons are over there. And as I said, we're smack bang between the Sugarloaf and the Skirid. Or an actual fact, I'm gonna sit right here. So I was just thinking, <clears throat> it just makes it easier to accept Paul's death out here. You know, when you move 
through the landscape. It just reminds you of uh, the fact that constant flux exists in our life. That it doesn't remain the same at all. That it, you know, it is constant motion. And that helps you grieve. That helps you come to terms with things. You turn a bend and wow, you know, there's a new view. I mean, check this out over here. I mean, just through there, through that valley. I mean, besides it being pleasant, <clears throat> it's a different configuration. Round the bend there, different altogether. And it's this constant stimuli that helps you get through a real tough time. You haven't got time to wallow in the pain of that loss. The constant stimuli is, you know, kind of forming a layer over it. Or not even over it, it's not about entrapment. It's infusing it with light. It's almost being kind to the pain, if you like. And that's what I feel. I feel when I'm out here and these constant views and these different configurations and the stimulus, it's being kind to me. Soothing me. And that's the thing with grieving the loss of someone, you know. You can't wallow. You can't wallow in the pain. Yes, feel the pain, you're going to. But you have to renew your mind, your body, your spirit, your soul. You have to renew it. You have to feed it with new experiences. That's what it craves. If you remain static after you've lost someone that you value, then you're going to hurt badly. The best thing to do is to face the wall, get out the door, and start creating new experiences. Now, it's beautiful here. It's an easterly wind. And I'm on the western slopes of Blangaveni, and I'm looking at the sugar loaf, and it's nice and still. The sound quality is amazing. I mean, Paul loved this type of environment. Where you could sense the land, you know? And it's almost as though I'm seeing through his eyes now. And he has, during my grieving process, my bereavement, Paul has actually inhabited me. His spirit has inhabited me and I've seen through his eyes. And it's a most odd feeling. <laughs> I'm not sure whether that's the preserve of twins or not, but it is a most unusual feeling. It's wonderful, it's nice when it happens, because it feels as though I'm Paul just for a moment. And so, therefore, I'm reminded that Paul is with me. You know, that he's most definitely made a deposit within me, right at the soul, right at the core. So, yeah. I have fleeted in and out of Mark or Paul. <laughs> it's odd. I'm both. And I am one. And I've been learning this since Paul's uh, death in November. Well, this is the birth of <clears throat> the new Y Explorer. This is what my channel is about. This is what our channel was about. It was about life. And life is certainly being exhibited right now.
There's a nice little gorge down there, which we'll be walking through. Which will take us down to the road. Well, I say down to the road, through to the road. And then a uh, three and a half K walk to Abergavenny then. I'm gonna have a cup of tea. It looks as though I'll be catching the train back to Hereford. Is that a Jenny Wren? That's a Jenny Wren. Loud little birds, aren't they? <laughs> we have sign. Rabbits, no doubt. Looks like it. wonderful meeting here with, with the owners of the cottage uh, last time we were here, two and a half years ago, just over. It was really friendly and I'm really tempted to just knock on the door and see if it's the same people. I'm just going to see if it's the same people. All right. Just been speaking to the owners, the owner Paul of the cottage. Of course. Paul and I had met them last time we came through and he was really pleased that I knocked on the door and so was I. See it just goes to show doesn't it that often your fears are unfounded and people are generally you know very friendly and he was sad to hear about Paul and I was happy to share the story with him. So yeah uh, a friend in the making I would say because he's invited me back for a cup of tea. <laughs> this is right out in the back of the sticks. So it just goes to show, you know, if you reach out, people are, you know, tend to be very welcoming, you know. So good on him. Nice one, Paul. With this uh, beautiful vista behind me, I'd like to take the opportunity <clears throat> to thank someone out there. Now, I don't know your name. Don't know who you are. I don't know where you live but you wrote me the most beautiful letter when Paul died. In it you mentioned Murbach Hill and the Wye Valley and the River Lug. And you mentioned and emphasized that these were places that you had once loved and enjoyed. I can only but assume that you're elderly in years because you mentioned the 70s and 80s. Well, if you're listening, I'd just like to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for what was the most uplifting communique message that I had ever received, I think. It came at a time, came at a time when I needed that and I extend my love back to you. And um, I'm gonna do a video. I'm gonna go in wild camp near Murbach Hill and I'm going to walk the river door. And I'm gonna do that for you. And I'm gonna do it for Paul. All right, that behind me is the Skirid. I've just been at Blangabeni. It's been a fantastic day. So if you'd like to like, please do. Uh, if you'd like to comment, whatever the comment, feel free. 
this one, you know, it's been about bereaving and it's been about the outdoors, it's been about the snow and the ice and it's been a great day. So any comment, so long as it's pause, as they all are anyway. And if you'd like to subscribe, then uh, I look forward to your company. All right then, you take care of yourselves and be well. I'm gonna walk into our bigger venue now, nice and slow, nice and easy. Take care.